Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Now we're going to install the volume control and you'll see why we went ahead and prepped the ends of these wires before we put this in. There's just not a lot of room to work in here afterwards so let me go ahead and screw down the volume control into the front of the amp. Tighten that up tight later. So first we're going to connect I think we're going to connect this side first. And so it just goes like that. Actually it's probably going to be better to do the short one first. So let's see if we can kind of get that one out of the way. I'm going to bend this like this and it's going to go in there just like that. So let's get our solder and do the ground side first. And what I'm probably going to have to do, like I showed you in another video, is stand this up on its end because gravity's fighting me here. But I've got it nailed down good enough. And then this side over here, I had already filled in the hole. So all I got to do is heat that up, put the wire through, and then take the heat off. And that's that side. And over here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the ground first. And then put the positive through. And this is another one of those places where the shorter the better. You don't want to run these things like all over the world before the, you, you go into these terminals. And there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and stand the app up and do this terminal a little better before we move on. And there we go. We got our two shielded signal wires going from the volume control over to the grids of the input tubes. The last thing we want to do here is we need to install the small LED that goes from the cathode over to the ground. And as you can see, these are little tiny LEDs. We do need to make sure we're installing them in the right direction. And the easiest way to do that, and while these are marked, I always like to double check to make sure I'm installing them in the right direction. So go over to your resistance that has a diode checker too. Don't know where it is on your meter, but on this one, you cycle through this, and you see the little diode signal. So you know you're checking a diode, and then I clip a couple leads on. It lights up, and it shows you the voltage, 1.58, which is right at where we want to see. So we know that this side is the negative. It's easy enough to know, to know if you put them in backwards because they won't light up. If they light up, you know you put them up, you know you installed them in the right direction. So we're going to go ahead and solder these two little guys in. I was waiting to solder in those shielded cables before I put these LEDs in because these things are so tiny and they are fairly heat sensitive. 
So these terminals have plenty of solder on them. So I'm just going to come in here, hold this guy like that, and solder it in place. You, you may not be able to see me doing this. And when you're done, it's going to look just like that. Let me zoom in here. It's going to look like that. So let me do the other side. Go get my RCA jacks all ready. And we'll come back and finish this video up. Okay, guys. We're almost done. But I do want to show you... The difference between audio connectors and why I choose the ones that I use. And we did the speaker terminals earlier. And here is the one I like. And here are the little uh, cheapo ones that you see in a lot of the Made in China amps. Obviously, there's a huge size difference. And when you look at the the hole that the speaker cable can go through, these have a lot larger hole and it has a lot more thread engagement when it comes to the edge of the hole. With these little cheap ones, not only is the hole a lot smaller like that, but as soon as you get like to there, it just falls off. And by the time you get like one, one and a half turns, that's as big a speaker wire as you can put in these where these larger ones, you have a lot of thread engagement past where the hole is. So you can easily put like 12 gauge wire in there and it's not a problem. But the main thing I don't like about these little cheap ones is, see how it's got this little tab here that you solder the wire onto and then you use this nut that like sandwiches all this together. There's no direct connection between the wire and the stud. It's connected through this little lock washer and that could end up being some resistance or over time corroding and causing a problem. Where on these, you're soldering the wire directly onto the stud. So you know it's going to get a good connection and stay a good connection. And that's a similar problem I have with these little cheap RCA connectors that you see in a lot of you know, lower end products. They the nut sandwiches this little tab in place and there's no direct connection between the body and the negative side of the signal path. Where these, you're soldering directly onto the body of the terminal for the ground connection, which again, you know it's getting a good connection and it's not going to degrade over time. You can save about 10 bucks putting these little cheap ones in I just don't think it's worth it I mean these other ones are these are so much nicer you know I just step up and buy the better ones I get these off eBay I'm sure they're probably China clones of some name brand ones that may be slightly higher quality but these seem to work fine for me so Let's get into finishing up this amp. Here's the, here's the amp, and the volume control is right up here, and this is the wire. We just pull it over the edge of the amp, outside the amplifier like this, so we can work on it. We're going to take this apart. And I also like having a little glass of water here to cool this thing off after I solder onto the body. So, just like I showed you with the speaker jacks, I want to file off this coating. And I'm not sure exactly what this stuff is, but it doesn't solder super great. And I just feel better getting down to the brass, what we're going to be soldering to. And you want to do this leg with the, see how that's U-shaped? like this, 
we're going to be soldering to here and to here. Make sure you file this one off, not that one. Okay? The next thing we're going to do, and let me try to do this zoomed in so you can see a little better. We come in with some flux, put it on there, and then that's ready to go. And I'll, like I said, I'll zoom in when we're doing the soldering. So on the end of this cable, we've already cut this to the right length. And on this end, the ground shield or the outer shield is not going to be connected to anything. So we want to cut off enough of this insulation so we have long enough pieces of wire here. And it is a balancing act of keeping it shielded as much as you can and then having enough wire to comfortably work with coming out of the end of this um, insulated sheath and shielding. So you have to kind of look up and that's not long enough. So we need to, so we need to strip back a little more of the insulation. And I think that'll work fine. So again, make sure you get all of these little tiny strands. And if you have to get a magnifying glass to get in here and look at it closely to make sure you get all of them, it's very important that none of these stray little strands are hanging out and are going to short especially to the signal terminal because one of these little strands is enough to short out the input and you'll have absolutely no sound on that channel. So we're going to carefully come in here and strip back and trim back this these little outer shield wires and make sure that there's no stray ones. We don't want any stragglers out there. Next we're going to strip back Guys, I'm excited. These are the last two wires that we have to connect. So I'm going to come in here, like prop that up like that. Go ahead and make sure these are twisted up together. And go ahead and tin these so they stay together while we're working on them. Just like that. And then the white wire is going to go to the body, and the center one is going to go th through that little pin like that. So first what we want to do, and I found just about anything you can find to kind of prop this up so it doesn't roll around on you. We want to heat this up hot enough so that the solder melts to the terminal itself. And you want to make sure it's not just sitting on top of it, that it's actually melted to the brass. And it takes a good bit of heat to get it there. So make sure that you have your tip clean. And then we come in here. And just be patient until you see the solder actually melting when it touches the metal. It's not there yet. You can see there's a lot of melted solder. There we go. Now it's hot enough to melt to there. Then we come in with our ground wire. Try to hold it as still as possible. While that cools off. And here's where I use the water. Come in and just dunk the whole thing in because the outside of that's gotten pretty hot 
and we don't want the heat to heat soak into the rest of the RCA jack and melt this plastic, you know, around, because there's plastic all around here. And so you want to heat this up hot enough to really get a good connection, but then you want to cool it off so the heat doesn't transfer into here and melt this plastic. So the last connection we have to make is this one right here. And again, heat this up. Blow a little air on it. And then dunk it in the water. And it looks like that. So the last thing we have to do is put this jack in the front of the, in the back of the amp. Not the front, the back. Um, also make sure you're cooking up the correct color to the correct channel. Typically red is right and the white is left, which is the way I wire up my stuff. One of these washers has a little step on it that looks like it looks like that you want to make sure you put that one on first feed it through the back of the amp then you put this little washer on get this over like this and then you thread that nut down and we'll come back with some pliers tighten that up we can tuck this little wire up in there. You turn that down a little bit like that. And there we go. And I will probably come back and with some contact cement and tack these wires down up here in this corner just to make sure they don't go anywhere. And again, get some pliers and tighten this nut up. But Guys, we're done. That's it. All finished. One last thing I want to show you. Okay, I want to show you what these two LEDs look like when they're done. They're soldered across like this. And one of the things, I did solder this one in backwards. This mark goes to the negative. So when you're done soldering these LEDs in, Make sure you put the negative of your voltmeter on this pin, put the positive on this one, and then turn it on to diode and make sure the LED lights up. And check both of them. You want to make sure that these are wired in right, because if they're not, the amp won't work and you'll be going, hey, what's going on? There's no cathode voltage. There's not going to be any if you wire those guys in backwards. The other thing I'll could do is I'll come in here with a little black paint after I'm done and put a little black paint over them so that they're not as bright. You don't see that glow coming out from under the amp. And I still have to put the bottom cover on and do a little fab work on that, but we're done, guys. We're ready to put the volume knob on it and fire this thing up and do some voltage testing and get ready to listen to this. So I really hope you're enjoying the series. This video may be a little longer than some of them, but I wanted to just get this last part done in one video. If you are loving the channel, please subscribe. Please go to the website. There's a donation page. If you feel so inclined, I would really appreciate any donations you send so I can buy more gear and products and stuff to play with. Anyway, we are going to wrap this thing up at the next video with voltage testing and then put it on the scope and check out what we get out of this little amp. So until then, have a nice day.